Hello, in this video and in the next one we will present you MATLAB and Simulink, the two frameworks that we will work with in this MOOC. We need to learn how to use MATLAB and Simulink, but you don't need advanced skills on neither MATLAB nor Simulink. So, in this video we will show you the most basic features of MATLAB and describe how to use it. Of course, if you already know MATLAB, you can skip this video. And if you know nothing about MATLAB, perhaps you want to learn MATLAB in a more perfect environment, which is the MATLAB Academy by MathWorks, the same corporation that develops MATLAB. Here, if you go to this website, you can launch MATLAB on RAMP. And this is a very useful tutorial of how to use MATLAB. You will need to log into your MathWorks account, but once you have done this, you will be able to follow a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure. In this video I will try to do the same and to introduce the same basic concepts. It's very important to remember that when you enroll in this course you have a free MATLAB and Simulink student license at your disposal. This student license comprises all the toolboxes and support packages that are needed in this MOOC and also many others. So, for more details, please go to the course website to see how to install this student license. Our recommendation for both MATLAB and Simulink examples is to run them changing some parameters, some values and seeing what happens. Remember, once again, that you only need to know very little about MATLAB and Simulink to follow this MOOC. Ok, so in this video we will learn about the environment of MATLAB, which is a very very powerful tool with its, with, with its own uh, editor. Also we will learn about commands, very useful commands and variables. Built-in functions developed by MATLAB and third parties, which will make our life easier. We'll see how to deal with vectors and matrices, how to import and save data, how to plot this data, how to request help from MathWorks or to other colleagues of you in this course. We will learn the difference between scripts and functions and also some basics about programming, flow control and if-else statements. Finally, we will end the video with some suggestions of, on how to use MATLAB in a more efficient way. Let's start with the environment. Ok, let's move to MATLAB to see it in real time. This is the MATLAB environment. This blank part of the screen is the command window. Here you will execute commands and you will do a lot of things here. This window is the workspace. Here you can see some variables that are active in MATLAB environment now. For example, the variable age h0, h1, and so, on, and so on. And here it's listed the content of the directory, the directory that you are now in. This folder, this directory, is listed here. This is the complete root where I am now. And here, this menu, you have a lot of buttons to do a lot of things with MATLAB. For example, here you can launch Simulink, the other MathWorks environment. Here you can launch a new script or 
a new function, or an example, a class, and so on. Open, folders, etc. Here, in another menu, you have a lot of options to plot data and some apps. We recommend you to see how these examples work, but to follow this course, you will only need to know a little bit about MATLAB. So let's focus on it. Let's go to the editor. For example, I click right click here and open this example. This is a very simple example that I strongly recommend you to open and to try to see which means every single line of it. For example, you have comments, we have added comments, which is everything that's followed by this symbol. You can see them in green and these comments aren't read by the, by, the, by the MATLAB. It's only readable for humans. They are ignored by MATLAB. Okay, so we clear the, all the variables that we have, we close all the windows and we also clean the screen. So this is a very simple example. Here we will learn how to use variables and how to perform some simple operations. We state that the radius of our circle, we will uh, operate with a circle, its radius will be 1. And we will calculate here its area. It will be pi multiplied by the square of its radius. We will calculate also its perimeter, which is twice its radius multiplied by pi. And here we will pause to see the output of, the, of, the, of this script. Another remark is that if you include a semicolon at the end of your instruction, the output will not be shown in the screen. But if you don't include this semicolon, this output will be shown. It will be calculated in any case, but will, it will be only shown if you remove the semicolon at the end of the, of the uh, instruction. So let's run, clicking here, this script and we will see the area and the perimeter of this circle. Okay, let's go. We run and we go back to the MATLAB environment and we see that the area is pi. Okay, it seems okay. And it's post. The execution is post. If we press any key, the execution will move forward. But if we want to see now the calculated uh, perimeter, we will need to interrupt the execution, pressing Ctrl and C at the same time. OK, operation terminated by user. And we can see that here we have different variables, the same variables that we had here, the radius, the area, and the perimeter. OK, the area, it's pi. The perimeter, it's 2 pi. And the radius, it's 1. OK, so let's move on with the example. This instruction, this lets us to display some text in the, in the command window. In this case, we will show all the variables that are active by the moment in MATLAB. So here, if we run this example, again, we press any key and we see that we have three different variables. That's the expected result. Okay, let's move on. With this command saying save and the name of the file, you save the content of every variables active in the workspace into that file. And if we clear the workspace, then we need to reload to import this data to see its values. So, let's move on. We have the following variables. There are no variables because we have cleared all of them. We load this uh, file 
and we have all our variables again. So note that here we have saved, then we clear the workspace and then we load this content that was saved previously and now we have the variables that we had before. Thank you.